Hi, everybody. This is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week, we're going to take a look at setting up accounts on your server. And we're going to take a look at the users' accounts area and group accounts. Now, uh, one of the benefits of having a server is to be able to have, uh, be able to create user accounts on it so that people can log into your server and take advantage of all of the different services that you've got set up. And the benefit of having groups is to be able to have a simple way to manage all of those us users you set up. Instead of having to do it individually per user, you're able to do it uh, through the management of groups. And so I'm going to cover how to set up both of these and the various options that are available to you. Now, this is the user's interface here, and you can see that I've got uh, one user already set up here, and this is just my local user. This is the user that I created when I set up uh, my account on this particular Mac, and so that account always will show up here, uh, basically inside uh, your user's area. So all of your local accounts, the ones that you have uh, set up in system preferences under your users there, uh, will actually show up here as well so that you can manage them through the server interface. Now you'll notice uh, I've got a drop down here that shows all users and it also shows local network users and local users. Now local users, like I said, you notice the thing disappears uh, because it's showing me the local users on this machine. Again, these are accounts that are machine specific, not uh, accounts that are server specific. And uh, the difference between that is, is again, your local users can only log into this particular machine. Uh, they can't log into the other Macs. But your network users can log in from any uh, computer on your network and use their credentials to get in uh, to your network that way. And that's the difference between these local network users, which if I click that, you'll see I have nobody there because I haven't created any users yet. Now, the local network users, in order to create this, if you haven't watched any previous screencasts, the only way that you get this option available is if you set up an open directory. The open directory uh, is, uh, is what allows you to have the network accounts in the first place. And so you need to have this service running if you're going to uh, set up local network users uh, in, in order to make that happen. So that's how you need to do that. Uh, so anyway, so let's go back to all users so you can see this here. And uh, I'm just going to go in and show you what a uh, local user account looks like on here, and then we'll create a network one. So if you just uh, double click on the user here, you're taken into their screen. Uh, again, you can see you've got the full name, you've got their account name, uh, any email address information you want to put in there. And see, right now I don't have any uh, because I haven't set that up. Uh, then you have this option to allow the user to log in. So in other words, they can log into the computer and they have the option to administer, administer this server. So they can be set up as an administer, administer. And so I just want to go ahead and check that. Uh, you can also limit the disk usage uh, for this user to whatever size you want, so that if you're creating multiple users and you've got limited space, you can actually limit the amount that they can use on the server uh, so that it doesn't fill your server up or fill your storage up. So you can limit that there. Uh, you can also add them to different groups uh, if you want to, and I'll show you how to do that when we set up the network user. Uh, you can put in some keywords in here too, so that if you've got a, a lot of different users and you want to do kind of a quick search for them, you can put in some keywords so that you know who they are. Maybe they're managers if you're in a business, or maybe they're a part of a certain department. You can put that information in there, and then you can put any notes that you want to on, on the user as well. So I'm just going to click OK and let that go. All right, so let's go ahead and set up a user. Let's set up a new network account user. Now, here's the thing. If I have set up Open Directory, it's going to automatically create a network user for me. And so that's, uh, like I've said in, a pre in the previous screencast on Open Directory, I would advise that if you are thinking of using network users, make sure you set up Open Directory first. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to come back and undo everything you did uh, to get it into a network account. So it doesn't allow it just to kind of go back and forth. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a new user here. And so I get the blank screen here to create a new user. So I'm just going to give him a name. So let's say it's, his name's John Doe. All right. And so there's his uh, account name. I'm going to actually put his short name down to John D. And then we're just going to put his name. So, you know, let's give him an email address. You know, John at, uh, let's just say, uh, doe.com, something like that. Then I give him a password. And now I can choose whether to allow him to, to uh, administer the server or not. Now notice it doesn't say I've given him access to log in uh, because that's a given because it is a network account. So it's not going to ask me that at all. It only asks me that on a local account. So uh, I can allow him to administer the server or not. I'm not going to allow uh, John to do that. Now I've got this option here to choose where I want his home folder to be. 
And you can see it's either local only or none at this point. Uh, again, none means that he's only going to be accessing the services. Uh, he's not going to be using a home folder at all. And so I can choose one of those two uh, if I want to. And, you know, if, I, if this happens, it's going to set up a local uh, home folder for him. Uh, if I choose this one, it won't. So I'm going to say none right now because I don't want him to have access. And you notice what just disappeared here. Let me just come back. The limit disk usage disappeared because now I'm not storing a home folder on the server. So John doesn't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to leave that alone. What I am going to show you uh, in the future, in a future screencast, is how to put home folders actually on the server. So for now, I just want him to access services only. Uh, in terms of keywords, I'm, uh, let me just put that, uh, you know, he's a, uh, let's just put demo on there because he's a demo user. And then I can put any notes I wanted to. And you can see it kind of added it as a tag on there for me. All right, so I'm going to create this account for John Doe. And so now it's going and setting up this account for him. And there we go. Now you'll notice we got John Doe here, and he's a local network user. And then we've got the other myself here, and it's just a local user. So right in here, it tells the difference between the two. Again, as I showed you earlier, you can sort, right? Local network users will only show Don, John Doe. Local users will only show the one that I had before. And then all users shows them both. All right, that's the difference between those. Now, I can delete a user anytime I want just by highlighting them and clicking the minus button down here. Uh, and I can also add users down here with the plus button. Now, if you see this little gear icon down here, if I look, I can actually uh, either edit the user. I can also edit access to services. And so what this does is I can actually say what services John Doe can access and ones he can't. Just by unchecking these or checking these uh, will give him access. So if I uncheck any of these, he no longer has access to that service. Uh, so this is where you would manage whether they have access to services or not. So if you get stuck and someone can't access something, you might want to come in here and just make sure that you've got the boxes checked for the service that you're trying to get them to access. Okay, let's go down here. I can also edit his mail options if I wanted to. I can say where I want his mail to be stored. It can either be forwarded uh, or stored locally. Uh, so again, once it's forwarded, then it's off the server and it's on his mail client. And I can limit his mail to be uh, a certain size so that if, if I don't want him getting huge emails because I don't want it to sort of take over my bandwidth or clog the system, I can limit it right here. I'm just going to leave that alone for right now. Uh, I can also reset the password from here. I get this little reset password window. Once I reset it, it's, it's live at that point. So if your users ever lose their passwords, you can come right in here and reset them. So that makes that uh, pretty convenient. And then I can also create a template from the user so that that way that uh, user's template is used. And I can, it makes it a little easier for me than to just enter multiple users because it'll add the, a template with my keywords and everything else on it. So it does make that a little bit easier for you. Uh, again, down here I can do a search where I filter users. So like I did before, uh, you know, I can say, you know, demo. I can say keyword contains demo. And then John Doe shows up, so that's where my tags come into play. Uh, so I can filter the users if I've got a big uh, list. It makes it a little easier for me to simplify that down. So that gives you an idea how those users work. Again, with this local network account, John Doe can log into any computer uh, on my network then uh, using uh, that information, as long as he's on my local network. Let's go over to groups now. Uh, now groups has the exact same setup. I can do local groups, which I have none. I can do local network groups or all groups, and it will show up here. Now these groups basically allow me to manage certain users. Uh, by default, you have a work uh, group. And let me just double click on that so you can see what it looks like. And so the work group basically adds in uh, the members as you add them. So all of your network accounts will get added in here and then it also has kind of as a default for local accounts. So any other local accounts I might have uh, on my computer, uh, you know, ones that I can uh, uh, put together on system preferences, it's covering those, uh, those accounts as well. Uh, but within here I can say group services, I can give this group a shared folder. And so if I just click that uh, and I can click this arrow here, uh, it will actually uh, create that folder and show me where it's at. Now I'm clicking the arrow and nothing's happening because it hasn't created it yet until I say OK. Uh, but I don't want them to have one. I'm going to let that go. I can make the group members message buddies. So when I use the messaging service, uh, the, basically all of the people in that group will show up as buddies in the buddy list. And I can enable a group mailing list as well. And just once I click that, they'll have uh, whatever their group name is at my uh, domain name right here. And I have this group uh, mailing list that's set up. And then I can also create a group wiki if I wanted to do that once I set up the wiki service. And I'll show you how to do that when I actually enable the wiki service over here. 
Um, but again, you, you can automatically create a group wiki for this group, and then they can uh, you know, add things to that back and forth and have access to it. Uh, I have members here. I can add members whenever I want just by clicking this. Uh, I can also get rid of members just by clicking the minus if I want to. And the same, word, same thing here. I got keywords and notes that I can set up to manage these different users. All right, I'm just going to click cancel because I'm going to leave that alone. So you can add other groups at any time you want to. Uh, if you wanted to add a group for, the, for your kids in your household, for instance, so it makes it easier to manage them, you can do that. Uh, again, whatever you want to in terms of grouping your users together, you can add that right in here. Now, I've also got a few things here. I can edit the group. I can edit groups access to services. And this is really where, um, where managing groups shines because it allows you then to say, well, I just want to manage it for a whole group of people without having to do it with individuals. So you can check what services the group uh, has access to, and then that will uh, propagate down to all of your users as well and limit or give them the access that you want them to have. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier to manage them that way. Again, you can create a template from the group, and then you can edit the templates that you've got. So very similar to what we see uh, over in the users area over here as well. So that kind of covers users and groups. Uh, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do home folders on the server and a few other things with file sharing. Uh, but that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.